Well, 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 welcome to the Young Jerks. Back on Saturdays. WMF Radio. 6 p.m. every Saturday. It is us, the Young Jerks. You heard Frank say it. That's right. And um, what's going on today, Frank? Oof, Home? We got all kinds of stuff going on. I'm actually really excited. Uh, we we got a, a, a new format. We're going an hour and a half today. Yeah, we should... Uh, you know, good and bad news, you know, uh, smoking in the girls' room that came yep. after us every week is gone on a hiatus, and uh, we'll miss them. You know, I miss uh, Valerie and Carm and, you know, all the beautiful ladies on that show, Cindy, um, Jackie's mom. You know, there's a lot of good people on that show, so uh, we'll miss them, but we're going to uh, go to 90 minutes now. Yeah. And so. It was always fun talking to them, like for the four minutes that we had to talk before everyone. We had a crowd out, and they had a crowd in. And there was so many of them. But it was good listening to this show. Too. Yeah, they they were getting good. It was getting the topics to be... were really awesome. You yeah, know, it was like insightful stuff that like not everyone necessarily was like from angles that they were thinking of and stuff. And they had a lot of good debate. And yeah, it was a good uh, show that followed ours. Sometimes we had some of the same topics like market basket for a while, and it, it was uh, we loved their show. And oh, you know, I think that there may be something you know, kind of related. I don't know if it's going to be exactly the same or in a new format, but I think they will be, some of them at least will be back after the new year and we'll continue on doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. But like you said, like we're very happy that uh, starting today, we'll be going in from 6 PM to 7.30. 7.30. That's right. 90 minutes. So we don't have to rush as much. You might even, for once here, it kind of feels a little, a little like freer, doesn't it? Doesn't it yeah. feel a little like kind of a little bit looser like this? Well, especially too, since uh, the election is over and we were packing so much in back then. Oh, like, my goodness. We're, like after the election, we said we're just going to kind of take a break and just focus on things we want to talk about more. And just we know things come up during the week. So it's just easy to do our show anyways that way instead of just being so, you know how we do it, like, you know. Planning it out so yeah, much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Being so prepared. Yeah, we have stuff. Prepared. You know, and, I mean, that's one then... of the things I think that people wonder why our show is successful right now in this format. It's because we put a lot of preparation. We think about it. We talk about it. We work on it. Sometimes we have fights, don't we? That's Frankie? true. That's true. We 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 do butt heads occasionally. But I think that's part of what makes it actually a, a decent show to listen to. Because who wants to listen to an echo chamber? Yeah. And, and 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 the, the part of the reason why I get frustrated sometimes with working with people is that they some people can't handle that or deal with that. It's yeah. like why not? Why can't you just realize that when I bring up criticism, it's meant with love, no matter what. You know, like in, in the same with me. Like I appreciate when a friend does it with love and gives you that kind of that feedback you need, even though it's not really what you were hoping. To oh hear. yeah. Of course it's not what you want to hear. And, you, and, and you're like, but it's not like you're not going to be friends anymore over it. I mean, well, sometimes it makes it you better. Yeah. You know, especially if you take that and say, you know what? That's valuable. That's va- like in the certain instances too, with uh, what we're doing in radio, especially I came to it with a speech impediment, thinking I would never be able to do radio. And, uh, I had one of the most brutal people break everything I was doing down. Yeah. And and there was that's the reason why I actually, you know, became okay. I can listen to myself. It's a little bit better now. Like I feel better about it. And uh that's what I think we all need in these creative endeavors is to uh have someone check you. Yeah, and push it check you and push you along and and uh you know, make you accountable in a sense and and it's all right to be wrong. It's totally all right to be wrong. I mean, to, it's cool to be wrong and admit it. I think. Yeah, it's pretty normal and human, you know, yeah. to not be right all the time. Yeah, like we, I screw up the names all the time. Who cares? Yeah, it's funny. Who cares? We made yeah. a joke out of it. It's awesome. It you is. Know? And we applaud you when we when you do it right. Yeah, you know? <laughs> which has been <laughs> often lately. It has. It has. I'm no, trying. Like, you've been reading like the phonics books, like I've probably for you've been studying, <laughs> working on it. <laughs> No, so, again, but, we are the Young Jerks, and uh, we haven't even gotten to all the stuff we're going to get into today. First of all, have we had a phone call yet, David Hawk? Not yet. Still uh, still waiting. We've invited a big guest today. We should start that off. And some of you uh, who have been listening uh, last week especially, or even maybe you weren't even listening, maybe you just uh, caught on to a news story or a Facebook post. Um, last week we challenged the new governor of Massachusetts, Charlie Baker, specifically I did, with Frank's support. That's right. Um, 
it was a one uh, a beer versus joint challenge uh, for a thousand dollars, and it went slightly viral this week. It was like I don't know a thousand views on YouTube and featured on like four or five different major websites. Ben Swan picked it up. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, I was I was it was awesome because um, the. Bay State Examiner reached out to me, and I was like, yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, we, we totally, you know, we, we invited them. We're going to do it. This is serious. And uh, then it just got picked up by more and more people. And, and I they quoted like, wow. our whole show. Yeah. It was amazing. It was a big write-up on Bay State Examiner. I appreciate it, Andrew, for writing up the show. I thought it was very well done. And it got picked up by several websites from there. And uh, the video got viewed a lot. And, you know, the challenge still stands. We've sent it to the governor. Several of us, Bay State Examiner has now sent the challenge to the governor. I've sent it. Frank sent it. Other activists we know have sent it to the governor. We're asking for a response. I told the governor's crew today that I I, I was inviting him to call in at 6 p.m. Let's, let's hear his response. Will he accept the challenge? 6 p.m. That's the challenge. So we're waiting to see if he calls in. 617-500-7100. If you forgot the number, Charlie Baker, we're waiting for your call. And then you heard some crickets. I don't know. Is that a, is that a hint, David? You don't think he's going to call phone's not ringing? Uh, well, that, that's just what I expect from Mr. Baker. Oh, David Hawk, our, our board producer, weighing in on it. I, uh, I reached out to uh, a few of the campaign people. For Baker, yes, that that I had known, you know, in, in a past life, and I was like, "Hey, is is, is Charlie going to uh, going to respond to the challenge?" And uh, could you cue, cue up those crickets? That's that's the response that I got right there. No response. Crickets. No response. I haven't gotten a response either. And it's not the first time I've invited them. Like I've asked them for quotes in the past during the campaign for Dick Boston. I mean, I'm a print journalist. I get. You know, two or three publications print my work, and I have we have this radio show. We have a platform. You know, one of their one of their opponents came on five times on this radio show. I don't get it. I don't get why. You know, maybe you don't want to come on because you don't have the time. There's so many off. You know, things that happen with these candidates in terms of the time. But why can't we even get a response? Why can't we even get one intern to return a call? I mean, don't we? Don't we? It's not, election time. it's not election time. It's not election time Even even during governor. the election time, I couldn't, Frankie. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's even that's that's part of the course. I when mean, I said, you know, yeah. But, I mean, you're care. especially not going to get an answer now. You yeah. know, especially not going to get an answer now. Yeah, really. Because but we're going to have to demand it. Like this is what we're doing. We've we've said this. We're going to continue to challenge this governor. We uh, are also going to get it to the medical marijuana because that's huge right now, and we're still we want caregivers. There's a new uh, story that came out uh, with a uh, guy. The attorney of Mass, uh, the federal attorney in Massachusetts, Ortiz, uh, Carmen Ortiz, yep. that she's looking to uh, possibly stop some of these medical marijuana dispensaries from open. We only have, uh, I think it's ten or maybe it's eleven that have been uh, permitted. Mm -hmm. There was a few more, so I, I don't know what the number is now, whether it's thirteen or fourteen, but probably half of these at least, especially yeah. in the in the areas where we really need them, are going to be disqualified if that happens. And it's just another sign that this whole DPH mass program is such is so dysfunctional. It's exactly like I said, Frank. How many will there be, even be one in the next year open? Well, we don't know. I mean, it's thing. just it's just a joke. And we but it's need okay to sell caregivers across the street so from school. We, right. This story is not going to go deal. away. We're going to keep talking about these kids. We're going to keep talking about save Haley. We went away from that for a few weeks, but we're not going to give up on this. And we're going to no. keep. We got a new governor, and we're going to Charlie Baker. You heard from us week one with the challenge. Expect us because we're here and we're not going away. This community is not going away. We also, uh, speaking on that, we also have Healthy Hetty uh, Lifestyle in the house. We have Holly here. Say hello. Hello, hey, Holly. Hey, hello. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming. Hey. And Steve Evans, her husband here. Hi, guys. Thanks for having us again. Thank you. And, uh, we, you know, you, you've been here every week and participating and you watch what happened this week what do you th expect do you think that the governor is going to see some of this and maybe well, maybe do the right thing on medical marijuana maybe back off on his legalization do you think it will have an effect holly i, I mean i'm not sure if um if they're going to back off, I hope that they recognize that either way, that this is a good opportunity for for exposure, um, at least for their for their camp. And um, think about all the people that he can help in the meantime. I do think that they need to recognize. But uh, politics is politics. I really don't have too much faith. Yeah. 
Well, and, and he's already pandered, you know, to the patient saying that, well, you know, we passed the law. We, you know, need to get this thing going here, you know. But well, what's he going to do about exactly. it? Exactly. What, what gonna... is he proposing to do? Like, he hasn't proposed anything yet. Well, that's the point, you know. And we and, need drastic action on this. And thank you, Frank. And, is and he, But is he going to stand up to Common Ortiz is the question. Yeah. And is no. he going to is, is he going to uh, bring up the caregiver option that the no. DPH has to if they really want to get the program going and help these kids and help these patients, they need to allow caregivers. They need to lift the ban on the one to one. That's crazy. It should be at least five patients like other states that right. have working caregiver programs and allow people to get their medicine has to happen is this governor going to actually do anything about it or is he going to uh just you know hang out with martin walsh and lose another campaign against marijuana in massachusetts because what martin walsh like he said a perennial loser on weed basically perennial. every time there's a weed ballot and there is every you know that is a true statement in some respects because almost every election now there's a ppq or something on the ballot in his district in his you know where when he was a state rep and yep. mayor and you know all these things he's done there's always been questions on there and he's always opposed them and he's always lost like every single time there's a ppq or a statewide ballot question in massachusetts it wins and it wins by two votes to one probably wins by a higher margin than he does Absolutely. You know, if you looked into it, I bet you weed has a higher margin than Marty Walsh. I mean, it beat Obama the first time he won. Yeah. Remember how big Obama's first win was in Massachusetts? Yeah, yeah. Weed beat it. 